So basically, my presentation is entitled Review of Sanitation Treatment Technologies for Urban Slum and Rural Communities. So for the Filipinos, I guess this is going to be like an introduction of uh, the sanitation system. So hopefully you'll, you'll learn uh, something like a global, for the global installations. Um, so the outline of the presentation will be as follows. Sanitation systems, technologies for waterless system with urine diversion and the multi-criteria decision analysis tool for technology selection. So the last topic here, um, it's in my presentation, but that's, uh, I guess with just 15 minutes, we'll not be able to tackle that one, but feel free to approach me later uh, about that one. So just want to introduce the eight sanitation systems by IAWAG. Uh, That's a Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology. So they have actually different uh, sanitation systems um, from simplest to a more complicated one. So let's discuss one by one. When we talk about Single pit system, uh, typically we can find this in the rural areas. So it's all still existing in, in the Philippines. And you go, maybe some of you are using that one. So we're in, uh, you just, um, you, have, you have a tank and you defecate in there. And these areas uh, should be in areas that are not prone to heavy rains or flooding or else that will contaminate you know, the, the, the groundwater. The second type of system is the waterless system with alternating pits. So if you have, also in the rural areas, if you have an area, uh, enough space in the backyard, maybe you could have two pits wherein you use one. If it's full, you transfer to the other one. And in that case, you allow that to, to produce or to decompose. So eventually you'll get the compost and uh, that will be re ready for use if you want to apply that as a fertilizer. Then we have a poor flash system with twin pits. So um, in, in this case, uh, again, same. So if one is full, then you could use the other pit. But in, uh, here, it's not dry toilet. It's more of, uh, we use water to flush the waste. Okay, so... Uh, low ground water table that is not at risk for contamination from these uh, pits. So that, that's where the areas that we could apply this kind of system. Waterless system with urine diversion. In here, it's a separate urine and uh, feces to allow uh, the uh, solid matter to dehydrate and or recover the urine for beneficial use. So I'm not sure if you already have... Uh, seen one, so uh, doc, Dr. Ichon has, uh, and, his, and her team has deployed several uh, UDDTs, we call that urine diverting uh, systems. So that's appropriate for rocky areas where digging is difficult and where there is a high ground water table or in water scarce region. Then uh, black water treatment with infiltration. So this one is our septic tank. So even in Manila, we have we have septic tanks. It's just that ours sometimes is not really uh, watertight. Okay? So ideally, that should be watertight and you have an uh, infiltration system. Okay? Um, the next type of system is the black water system with sewerage. So basically, that goes into the uh, sewerage, okay? then go to the STP for, for treatment. And that's very common for highly urbanized cities in the Philippines. And sometimes a combination of system five and then system, system six. And we have a semi-centralized treatment. So in, in, in this case, there we have black water is transported to a centralized uh, treatment facility and uh, um, semi-centralized in such a way that there are blocks or areas where you cater only uh, or where you implement this kind of system. 
The last system is a sewerage system with urine diversion. So it's like um, really uh, combining the the well. It's it's uh, the, what they they have been advocating uh, to to collect and recover the nutrients coming from from the waste. So instead of uh, discharging everything to the sewage system, they recover the urine and have, have the nutrients in there uh, recycled or treated. So I prepared a table in here to compare those seven or eight, eight systems with advantages and disadvantages. So I uh, don't want to go through each uh, item in here, but uh, that will just basically tell you that uh, main, for if we have like system number four, waterless system with urine diversion, um, that would require good knowledge of the system and acceptance of the community. Always, that's the social aspect is one of the challenge when it comes to, to waterless system. And also the maintenance depends on the treatment but one of the advantages is that no water requirement and uh, nutrients here can be recycled. The cost estimate that depends on, on the type that you will be uh, deploying, of course. So, um, so as I'll show you later, there are different types of uh, technologies that you, could, that you could use to manage the waste. So what I can say in here is that the first Five can be applicable to rural or remote areas and low low density population. So for that's why uh, I've put a, a check on for rural and peri urban areas. On the other hand, the items from four to eight systems that's applicable for urban and peri urban areas. So. Um, if you, you really check so that the, the system, again, and uh, that we, we are trying to, to advocate in here is the waterless system with, with uh, urine diversion, and which, which can be, well, for the Philippine setting, which could be useful for the rural areas where there's no pipe, pipe water, or for rural areas where the septic tanks would typically contaminate the, the groundwater and affect the source of water for drinking. Okay? And also for, uh, for urban areas, say for example, the, the stretch of Manila Bay, in, in, in that area where all, all the waste just go directly to the, to the, to the sea. So in, in that case, you know, we, could, we, could, we could say that uh, we, we could consider this one because coming up with a centralized system would be expensive for, for, for our case. So when we talk about the waterless system with urine diversion, one of the focus or target here is the treatment technologies. Okay, so basically for uh, source separated human excreta have to be treated differently because of different characteristics. So basic, uh, as, as mentioned in, the, in this morning's presentations, everything should be processed for that to be applicable you know, for, for uh, as fertilizer or even as, um, uh, yeah, as, as fertilizer for food production or for non-food non production. So for each type, we could have different types of, uh, of technologies, mainly for urine, to, mainly to recover nitrogen and phosphorus, for feces, mainly for recovery of, of organic matter and pathogens, and for both also recovery of nitrogen, phosphorus, or organic matter. So our aim is for material recovery and energy recovery. So what I did, check what are the technologies for, for urine treatment. And um, this list shows a wide range of technologies from the simple storage or volume reduction evaporation to a more complicated one like electrolysis or microbial fuel cell. Sorry, this may not be common to everyone, but what I'm trying to say in here is that cost would vary depending on the type of technology that you will uh, install. 
Uh, for uh, the project, um, the sanitation project of Rin in in Rin office in Kyoto, they have this kind of system. I just don't have the picture of that. They have forward osmosis, on-site volume reduction system, and phosphate recovery of miso, hopectin, yes, and yensis. Okay, that's for Ito Sensei's research. So um, that's quite again like a high-end technology. But but then again. Uh, composing could be just a simple, it depends on just uh, how you handle, just simple. Um, uh, we, you have a matrix, you have the waste, and just monitor uh, the, the composting process. So technologies basically can be, again, for storage, stabilization, volume reduction, and nutrient recovery, energy recovery, and special applications. So the choice of technology would really depend on what's, what's your aim. Okay, is your aim is just to st store and stabilize to prevent contamination, or would you like to recover it and use for another application? So uh, that that kind of question would dictate what type of technology you will use. So I don't have time to discuss the details of each type of technology, but then again, from the term itself, storage, you just store it and you make it stable through time. Okay, then chemical uh, stabilization by chemical addition, you use chemicals to stabilize and decontaminate the, the waste. Okay, so volume reduction. Um, we have nutrient recovery, struvite, nitrification, distillation, electrolysis, and so on. So uh, these are the, the high tech um, technologies that you could apply in, in urine. Uh, precipitation. Uh, for our team here in the La Salle University, we have uh, struvite precipitation. This is not our actual setup, but our aim is uh, to, to apply the system for septage and eventually for urine separated uh, waste. Okay? So that's the, with the use of chemical and simple reactor and eventually have it tested for, for um, <laughs> what they call that for agricultural purposes. So uh, I don't want to bore you with all those technologies, but you can have this presentation uh, for your reference. Energy recovery, again, basically we use this uh, from urine. You can, you can actually use that to generate electricity. And that has been applied in other areas where uh, just to light the bulb, then you can use micro, microbial fuel. So, okay. Um, special applications, reverse osmosis for the aircrafts. You know, uh, you know, you can, if you are outside in the space, you can drink it. Basically, you know, the urine, like you are recycling in there. Okay, so we, you can, we can have criteria on how to select each technology. So we are input requirements, resource recovery, hygienization. So depending on. Uh, electricity, water, chemicals, other consumables. So you can rate that as like a negative if, if for example, it would need high electricity. Okay, or low electricity, then just less, less negative. So for the resource recovery, that's more positive if you recover high, um, and, uh, high nutrient or energy based on the on the, what they call that, based on the technology that we are re referring to. Now, volume reduction, if it could reduce uh, the volume pretty well. The process complexity, of course, we don't want it to be complicated, especially if we are just deploying it to, to a family who, you know, it, it should be something that uh, it's easy to, to understand. Okay, then completeness of the system, uh, as much as possible, it's a standalone technology. Okay, so how what what I did here is all those technology. So I prepared a table wherein we have those ratings. Okay, that again is debatable. You could you could always argue that why why is it not more positive? Why is it not less positive? That depends on how you look at the uh, at what perspective you are looking uh, at. Now for 
uh, for the fecal matter, we have different technologies, sanitation and drying, nutrient recovery, energy recovery. Those are the aims. So it depends on what your aim is, you're going to have a different set of technology. So composting for nutrient and the nutrient remove recovery and removal. So this is uh, what has been um, implemented in some parts of Indonesia, right? The composting, the composting process. So energy recovery. We have uh, anaerobic digestion, pyrolysis, smoldering. These are the new ones which would require energy still. Okay, technology is just the same for for the fecal matter. Uh, I prepared again a table wherein uh, I, we put a rating based on the criteria I've mentioned a while ago. So same for the excreta. That's both the both the fecal matter and the urine. So again, the main aim is: is it to sanitize and dry? Is it to recover energy? Is it to recover nutrient or, or remove nutrient? So basically, the same set of technologies for the fecal matter. So I guess um, uh, you've heard about Bill and Melinda Gates. Uh, if you check the internet, you're going to see a lot in the last decade or two decades. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, different uh, toilets um, from, from different universities from different universities, if, if you notice, and different uh, mechanism inside. Okay? So again, we, for different types, again, it depends on you. You could have different options, and you can compare those options depending on what uh, your target is. So I'll, I'll end it here. So if you have um, any any questions on different technologies about, about urine and feces treatment or even the excreta for, for both, then I'm not the best person. Maybe Sensei could answer your question. Okay, so that will be my presentation for today.